So here we are with John, the owner operator and do it all over there at uh, Filster. How are you doing, John? Good, pretty good. How about you? Pretty good, pretty good. So, um, so we're here with John. We're going to talk to him about uh, Filster and um, Kydex and a whole bunch of different stuff tonight about uh, holsters. So, um, how did you actually get into the business? How did you get started? Uh, I started doing it just um, just as a hobby. I had uh, I had a couple guns, and I was you know getting into carrying those guns and whatnot. And uh, I was looking around, and I saw you know I'd been trying out holsters, and every one that I bought, I would like you know mess around with or cut or you know do something to it. And um, <clears throat> I started looking at you know some of the higher end stuff that hopefully I wouldn't you know have to modify <laughs> once I got my hands on it. <laughs> This was back, you know, a couple of years ago when it was all like, you know, a hundred bucks and, you know, 12 to 16 weeks worth of wait time. And I said, if I can't figure out how to do this in 16 weeks, I should just give up on, on everything. And so I sat down and I started, you know, this, I found like two or three good forum posts that sort of like gave you a, a vague idea of how to do this. And I started messing around and I decided that um, based on my experience with other things, sometimes it's really helpful to watch other people's mistakes as part of the learning process. And knowing that I was going to make these mistakes and knowing that there wasn't a whole huge wealth of information out there about the process yet, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these mistakes on camera. So I started um, sort of documenting my you know, failures and muddling through this process on, on YouTube. And folks, uh, you know, I, I discovered there was a other people out there who were uh, on their own, you know, learning curve throughout all of this, and they started uh, giving me good advice, giving me good feedback and uh, some, some tips and whatnot, and the videos started getting better, and the more of uh, this quality information I got, the more that I shared and demonstrated, and one day, uh, somebody sent me a, a message on YouTube and said, I want to buy something that you're making, and... I was totally astonished. And I said, okay, and I you know, accepted their money and I made them what they wanted. And uh, that started taking off a little bit. And um, I was working my day job, I was uh, fixing cars. And uh, one day I, you know, I would you know, go to work, I'd work all day and I'd come back and I'd check my you know, email and see that you know, people would send me money through PayPal and then I'd work until three in the morning to you know, make these holsters and then get up again. You know, and, go to work. I'm like, this is not sustainable uh, for very long. But unfortunately, it wasn't long after that, that I would look down at my phone during the day and realize I had made more money on PayPal than I was going to make fixing cars that day. And I said, that's enough of this. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I took the plunge and uh, started started doing this. Wow. That's a pretty, that's pretty interesting story. So that was around, what, 2011-ish? 2012? Uh, that was uh, around 2000. Around halfway through 2010, the summer of 2010, going into uh, 11, because in January 2011, we put out that big two-part video that everybody seems to have seen at this point. So, uh, yeah, that was January 2011. That that you know, I took you know everything that I had uh, learned and put it into a video uh, for folks who wanted to get started. We actually uh, got some some criticism recently about that video that I, I, I wanted to address. Uh, there are folks out there who are making awesome holsters, and there are folks out there who have been doing it for a while and have, like, a, a lot of really good experience. And they have really good processes that they've developed for, for making gear in large volumes. And um, we received uh, some criticism about uh, how... You know, oh, well, if you're going to make a bunch of holsters, you don't want to do it this way in the video that he talks about. Uh, you know, if you're going to make a whole lot of holsters, if you're going to have a business, I mean, that's not what the video the video is about. Mm. Uh, the, the video is designed such that somebody without a lot of resources can make a really good holster on their first shot right. without, without having to waste a lot of material. Obviously, the more of these you make, the more shortcuts you're going to find. You know, we don't do everything... You know, our shop doesn't run like that video. You know, we've got some really good shortcuts that allow us to keep the quality high and the labor time low. Right. Um, and those are the result of experience and, you know, fine-tuning and figuring out exactly how these, you know, need to get done in a timely fashion. So if you're making a lot of them, yeah, 
you're going to have different kinds of equipment. You're going to have different kinds of workarounds. But if you want to make two holsters on a Sunday and you've never done it before, that's what the video's for. Right, right. It's definitely so, geared you know, towards different. You know, while, while, while all those critiques are legitimate, while I wouldn't sit down and say, yeah, you can start a business off of this video, well, no, I mean, it's gonna, you know, your labor time is going to be way too high on the holsters. But if you've never done it before, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, a recipe in a cookbook. You know, if you've got like some celebrity chef and uh, they put out a cookbook, that's not how they're making it in their kitchen. Right. That's how you can make it at home, right? You know, and that's that's kind of what it's what what it's a little more geared towards. Right. And and the, a testament to that is the, the success that first time holster makers have had watching that video. That what I'm, I'm sure that has helped people along the way. It definitely has uh, much more than I ever expected. When I thought it was just going to help people, you know, like do something cool as a as a hobby, but um, <clears throat> we've gotten some feedback from folks who, uh, you know either have like a fixed income or whatnot and they're using uh, the, the, the video to sort of like help get them, you know, jumpstart uh, their ability to make these holsters and supplement their income, which is really cool. We've got people who are, you know, making holsters instead of flipping burgers, right. which is, you know, that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, the ability to do something, you know, creative with dignity as opposed to, you know, you know, if you're, if your options are, you know, start selling holsters to my friends and, you know, people at the gun club or be a Walmart greeter, there's an obvious choice there. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and it's, it's phenomenal. I've gotten some, some uh, surprisingly touching and humbling emails from a lot of people. And um, I don't take that uh, even remotely for granted, which is part of the reason that we're doing the, um, the holster clinic videos so that, you know, folks, you know, we don't, you know, we don't just want to like, you know, light this fire and like leave you hanging we want to take a little responsibility for this so if you're like making this work and you're seeking you know more verification or more advice you know you're welcome to you know send your stuff to us and we'll you know help your learning learning experience benefit other people the way you know we initially started off this whole process right so that's how you started off the process but how like what has kept you engaged in making holsters like you made it kind of as I need to make a holster for myself to turn into a business but why do you like to do it? well it's it's creative for one thing my you know my back my background was uh, is creative I you know went to college for fine arts um, <laughs> which is a, a funny circumstance to be in in a world full of you know like uh, you know, in an industry full of like, you know, uh, you know, police and military personnel. So yeah, I'm art school kid <laughs> making your holsters. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, what what keeps me engaged is that I just don't, I just don't want to go get an office job. That's impossible. You know, I went from from art school into fixing cars because it was like a problem solving, uh, you know, sometimes creative uh, process that kept me on my feet and kept me active and kept me out from behind a desk. And that's what I like about uh, the holsters. I mean, it's a very artistic process. There's a lot of craft involved. There's a lot of attention to detail. Uh, and there's also a lot of problem solving. So, like, when you're engaged with uh, uh, an end user who has a specific um, uh, a specific product they have in their mind that doesn't exist yet, and you work with them to create it, that's fantastic. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's a, there's an enthusiasm for, for firearms, there's an enthusiasm for carrying those firearms, and there's an enthusiasm for the creative process. And, um, you know, why walk away from all that, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely rewarding in many, different, in many different ways. So a lot of people ask the question, why did you end your um, outside the waistband line? Or, you know, why did you kind of limit that? And you used to, give it a, you used to have a lot of it, you know, and now you kind of cut it off and went towards the inside the waistband. Well, there are also a couple factors uh, uh, leading to that. Um, one is that uh, we created a circumstance in which anybody, anywhere, chances, if you live in America, chances are now that within a two-hour drive of you, there's somebody making Kydex holsters in their garage. And you can literally get a black outside the waistband Glock 19 holster anywhere. Um, like the like the regular pancake style, the prospect of continuing to compete in that market, considering the demand we had for our other products, um, it was to the point where uh, our stack of 
orders for, you know, like the skeleton holsters was like this tall. And the amount of material and time that each one took was drastically less than that of the outside of the waistband holsters. And we felt that it was our responsibility to focus on the um, products that we developed, which were more unique. Um, I don't typically uh, discuss or, or brag about this, but if I'm going to be entirely honest with the position that we're in, uh, the holsters like the skeleton and the access have become the holsters to copy. And we don't begrudge anybody copying them. In fact, you know, people send in um, uh, their, those styles of holsters to us as part of the holster clinic, and you know, we're entirely happy to see people making them. They're, it's, a, it's a good idea. And you know, to me, to a certain degree, intellectual property is something that exists inside your head. Once it's out in the world, how, how can you uh, uh, inhibit people from being inspired by it? Right. So they're, they're going to be inspired by it. And to a degree, the, um, you know, virtually every single person who's, who's doing that uh, is honest about where it came from. And the, 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 you know, the props or what have you come back to us. And that's, that's, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to see people uh, make these products. But, you know, we felt that it was uh, something that we did that was innovative and related directly to the way that we carry. You know, I live in Philadelphia. I almost never, ever wear an outside the waistband holster. So why am I going to make gear that I'm not? I mean, it's, it's an honesty issue. Right. You know, um, we sort of like had experimented with a variety of things in the past just to sort of see if we could do them and as like a technical challenge to ourselves, like things that involve like drop legs or molly gear or this or that. But, you know, that's not, I mean, where's my, where's my authority and honesty on that issue? It right. doesn't exist. So, so why am I going to front like I can make that? Right. right. I'm going to leave that to folks who have the authority and the experience with that to make those things. So uh, we felt that it was important to focus on the products that we are authoritative about and can honestly speak to their use and that you know frankly you know when it really boils down to it uh if i'm you know cutting up a two two foot by four foot sheet of kydex um if i cut it down to make outside the waistband holsters i'm cutting the amount of money that i can make in half right. as opposed to skeleton holsters um just just in you know Material costs. I can get twice as many skeleton holsters out of a sheet. Right. That's a, that's a, that's a financial decision. Especially what, what people have to understand is that we are bootstrapping this entirely. There is zero lending, zero borrowing, no banks, no nothing. Whenever we do something, it comes out of our pocket. So if I want to hire somebody, I need to make sure that the business that you know the the products that we're selling are selling at a volume and at a price that's going to support the hiring of another individual. Right. The thing is with the outside the waistband holsters, the amount of perfection that we wanted to put into them to do them it was prohibitive considering the volume that we wanted to do. You know, you're much, much, much better off finding somebody who's doing a lower volume and can take more time to do them and get them faster. Right. You know, there's like I sat down and I said, why should somebody wait? Oh, geez, like ten weeks for a Filster OWB Black Lock 19 holster. And my my answer was that they shouldn't. Right. I wouldn't. You know. Yeah. Like, I I I I didn't want to be the, you know I didn't want to become what I started in response to. You know. Right. I wouldn't sit down and wait. You know, ten twelve weeks for a Black Lock holster from Filster. I'd sit down and figure out how to do it myself. So, you know, you should go to somebody who's, you know, uh, paying close attention to, to the material that we're putting out and has an eye for the craft and a dedication that's making something quality and uh, and support those guys. Yeah, and I think that uh, Holster Clinic actually, you know, kind of is a part of what you're saying right there because there are people sending in outside the waistband holsters, which you probably will be able to recommend in the future if, uh, you know, they're up to the standards and such. Oh, there's phenomenal stuff. Yeah. Like, the you, like you, you, you can't walk a hundred yards without tripping over someone who's making really awesome holsters that are at the price that you want and available in the time frame you want. Right. So you know, I'll 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 just you know keep going down the path that involves you know innovation and 
and and whatnot. And uh, you know, those the people who want to you know make these really high quality things on a smaller scale are like absolutely welcome to. And I encourage you, uh, everybody, to check those out. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good business decision personally, uh, based on all the uh, you know all the information I know. Can I set a bad example for the kids who are watching? Sure. Awesome. <laughs> um, you know, as far as holsters go, you know, you have different. Let's get into kind of the specifics of, of Kydex. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I know enough to be dangerous. I have enough holsters to kind of know my my way around them, etc. But you know, a lot of things come up where people are kind of confused with you know, the, the thicknesses of them and, and what's this one for that one. You know, talk about thicknesses and where you find the different thicknesses to be good for that application. Okay, so uh, there are, you know, let's, let's make it simple. Available to us in the host, holster world, there are, there are basically four thicknesses. There's 60 thousandths of an inch, there's 80 thousandths of an inch, there's 93 thousandths of an inch, and there's 125 thousandths. Um, 60 thousandths is uh, really good. Um, the, the issue is that it's, it's very flexible and it's very thin. Um, for some inside the waistband applications, I'd, I'd really recommend it. Um, and even for some lighter outside the waistband applications, I'd recommend it to a degree. You have to be careful about the kind of cuts that you make in it, though, because the amount that it flexes. So you can get much tighter definition with 60 thousandths. But that results in a holster that flexes more during use. So you have to be careful about how you cut it and design it such that that flex isn't going to slowly turn into a crack over a long period of time. So if you've got like a deep V-shaped cut somewhere in that holster and it's 60 thousandths, that's going to turn into a point of flex during repeated use and you'll get a split. Um, so if you've got a well-designed 60 thousandths holster that takes into consideration the uh, long-term use of that holster, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, we switched to 80 thousandths um, for a couple uh, basic reasons. One is that since it's thicker, it holds the heat for a little bit longer. The 60 thousandths will heat and cool really quickly. Um, and when you're making a big batch of a number of things, it's really great to have something that gives you a little bit more leeway in terms of working time. Such that, say we've got like a jig for making something perfect. Uh, you know, like like a magazine carrier. We want it to be like really precise, and it might take us a couple extra seconds to get that jig set up and everything in place. If that eighty thousand is going to hold the heat for a little bit longer, then that's what we're going to use to give us a little bit more leeway in terms of the heating and cooling. Um, a couple other issues were that there were a couple of things we wanted to do with the design that we thought that uh, eighty thousand would support better, some like tighter cuts, sharper angles, um, and that. Uh, you know, entirely aesthetically, having just those 20 extra thousandths of an inch on a buffed edge, I think, looks a little better. Okay. You know, you've got a little bit more shiny edge to look at, and I kind of fell for that. So, yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing. We're doing them out of uh, 80 thousandths. Um, and uh, to, a, to a degree, it's going to, you know, it's always going to be hard to defeat a certain, of the, a certain amount of mythology of, oh, well, 60 thousandths is too thin. Well, you know, if... It, it picks up that reputation because folks have sort of like done more with 60 thousandths than they should have. Um, so ultimately with the amount of, you know, uh, information that's out there, it's probably better just to stick with 80 so you never have to justify anything else. Right. You'll be fine. It's kind of that uh, nice in between. 93 thousandths I think is great for stuff like if you're making like a drop leg. Um, if you're making something that it needs to be extremely, extremely sturdy and also doesn't need to flex that much. So something like a Safari Land style holster or something like a G-Code style holster where you've got um, pretty generalized definition and some sort of like uh, friction uh, related retention screw. So that's what, that's what 93 thousandths is for. Um, if you get a really tight mold with it, um, it's, it's going to be stubborn. Uh, so I would recommend a lot of generalization um, and some sort of like friction or adjustable retention. When working with that, and 125 thousandths is for uh, making components, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So, do you, how would if someone's going to get into the Kydex business, you know, what's the difference between working with each of them? I'm sure it's obviously more difficult to work with 93 thousandths. You know, like how much of more of a pain in the butt is it? Is there anything like that? Actually, I think 60 thousandths is a little harder to work with, especially for um, a novice, because yeah, it's really easy to 
overheat it too quickly and cause it to shrinky neck. And then when you're sort of like trying to get all your stuff set up, it'll cool down too fast. So you wind up something that looks with something that looks really over glossed and doesn't really have good definition at the same time. So I think I mean if you're just getting started, get into eighty thousands. Okay. So as far as you know, YouTube making reviews, you know, do you take a lot of YouTube reviews that are holsters with a grain of salt, or do you? I mean, is there? Do you feel as though there's a lot of YouTube reviews that are engaging and and or do, or do you feel it's kind of like this is a kayak holster, it's great, go buy it? Um, I, I look at a lot of this in terms of uh, when I, when I was you know in art school and involved in all of that. Uh, we we would have a lot of like group critiques where somebody puts up a piece of work and everybody has to talk about it. And if you say it's nice, I like it, you've essentially said nothing. Right. You know, is there a you have everything? You know, if you're going to have um, an opinion and present it as some sort of fact, there needs to be a because after your statement. Right. Right. Uh, and it's like it's like any review. You know, it's it's like I could go you know buy a bicycle and say I like it. That's great. You know, I, I like a lot of it. I, I like things that are terrible for me. Right. Does that mean I'm going to recommend them to everybody? No. You know, it's, um, I mean, I, I, I look at those reviews like, like I would look at, you know, anything else. Are you giving me valuable information? You know, uh, say whatever you will about, you know, guys like Nut and Fancy, but... <laughs> there's information in that review. There's a big because. There's, you know, long-term use. There's, uh, uh, you know, uh, information about what the, what, the, what the purpose is. Does this, you know, does this piece of equipment achieve what it sets out to achieve? Right. You know, and I, 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 think, I think, you know, reviews should be structured like that. Yeah. And I, and I can attest for you, at least. I mean, I have uh, the skeleton holster and... You know, I've told you things about it that I think, you know, I critiqued it and I and I've told you about it, and you're and you're open to that. And I don't like discussing things with companies that aren't like that. So I know, as someone who does review things, I'm, I'm appreciative of you being open-minded to the fact of whatever I or anyone else says. You know, I'm I'm sure you're probably the same way as everyone else. Um, you know, I know that people appreciate that quality feedback. That's how you get better. I mean, there are sometimes where where people are, you know. Pardon me. They might have some like individual gripe about something, and I'll, I'll you know that's that's legitimate. Some people think appendix carry is uncomfortable. Fine, we make appendix carry holsters. I'm sorry, but, like I, I can't like m magic this into being more comfortable for you based on your anatomy. Right. Uh, or you know if if somebody has like constructive, honest, valuable information, you know like. You know, I was using your product in the following circumstances, and I encountered this issue repeatedly. All right, let's let's talk about you know what the solution is for that and how we're going to address it. But if it's like you suck and I don't like your face, yeah, have a nice day. No. Yeah, I don't like the color. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the color. It's, can I get in, can I get in something other than black? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is I like this holster. I wish it was yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So how difficult is it to go from actually making the, the holsters and separating that time from R&D time and coming up with new concepts. You know, how hard is it to separate those two? Uh, they're, they're both ongoing. Um, the R we, don't, we don't dedicate X amount of R&D time per month. What we do is we uh, put certain things out in the world with certain people and uh, take their feedback based on that and, uh, um, you know, start making progress. So some of the R&D time uh, comes entirely from uh, production issues, you know? You know, it's like by, you know, like we're currently exploring some, some injection molded solutions for things. And that is, that in turn creates a higher quality product. You know, like if I could substitute an injection molded component where I was using a piece of 125 thousands, where in that injection component, injection molded component, component can withstand more abuse than a piece of Kydex can, oh, well, I'm absolutely going to pick that. Right. You know? So that's, that's part of the R&D. You know, it's like if I'm looking for a solution that, you know, uh, decreases my labor time as a result of mass production, that also gives me the opportunity to increase durability and consistency, which improves the product. Hands exactly. down. Um, you know, everyone, 
once in a while we'll sit down, you know, if we've got like some free time where where and somehow we're like waiting for material to show up or, you know, uh, I've got a couple people working on a couple things and I get a little time for myself, I'll sit down and I'll say, hmm, I want to like, you know, focus on making things better. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the improvements come incrementally, you know, where we'll look at a batch of something and say these are good and the customers are going to be happy with them. But what we'd like to see is a small improvement in these areas, and then every future holster gets us. Right. You know, um, it's not like it, you know, it, it's very rare to see us go from like a version one, and this is what's in the world forever, and then you know, spend a lot of time in R and D, and then come out with version two, which is you know, makes version one obsolete. It's a it's a it's a it's a gradient. It's like a it's a very gradual process that we go through. So it's kind of like an evolution. We collect, collect feedback and you know, uh, integrate our own improvements and solutions for things. And then, you know, sometimes it's like within within the space of a month. Yeah. And sometimes it's within the space over, you know, two years or something. Yeah, I know, I know if I was in that situation, I would just constantly want to be doing design stuff and just R&D and coming up with different ideas. It'd be hard for me to pull myself away from that into just making holsters. It, it, it is. Um, the... Uh, the, the the creative process is really enticing, but when you look over and you see like an inch thick stack of horrors on the clipboard, that's pretty compelling too. Like, yeah. wow, wow, this shit has to get done immediately, <laughs> and I don't have any time to dick around on anything else. Right, right. <laughs> so the holster clinic you're doing seems to be pretty successful. I really like to uh, to watch it. You know, um, how many people have actually sent you holsters? Oh, how many people no. have entered? I guess. Well, we've got five episodes right now. Um, a couple of those have two uh, companies featured in them, maybe two or three sometimes. Um, and I'm currently sitting on a pile of about six more other folks' holsters, just waiting to get reviewed. My computer had been down last week. I had to get it repaired. And we're kind of like cramming to get a couple things done. Uh, so we're going to be like, I think tomorrow I'm going to sit down uh, and film a whole bunch of them, and then edit them and release them yeah. uh, over, the, over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so if you've got a holster in the holster clinic, I'm sorry for the delay. We're getting to it. Uh, we're working as fast as we can. Yeah, I, I think it's been a real success. It's been kind of like a different kind of series that you haven't seen on YouTube very much. Uh, at least I haven't. Have you? Uh, well, you know what? I... <laughs> I, I had uh, gotten into the habit of watching episodes of Kitchen Nightmares, <laughs> and I said, huh, you know, that's that's actually kind of a, a, a good idea. You know, not, I mean, not, not like, you know, I, I didn't want to, like, get people's holsters and say, this is terrible, like, you're, <laughs> you're going to kill someone. You know, it's like yeah. I wasn't going to, like, you know, go about it in, like, the, you know, blowhardy kind of Gordon Ramsay way, but I said, you know, it's, it's entirely legitimate to generate in interesting content uh, as a result of helping people improve something that both you and them are passionate about. Yeah. So, I, like, that, that was kind of a drive. Like, we, we fell behind on making videos, and videos, you know, the, the YouTube engagement has always been a cornerstone of how we do things. And I was kind of, like, falling behind on those, or just, like, you know, doing, like, an iPhone video and throwing something up real quick just to, like, stay, stay in people's feeds or whatever. And, uh, no, I, I said we, we could do better than that. And I just, you know, needed something to consistently make videos about. You know, we reached a point where, you know, it was rare for us to have some, like, huge new thing that we need to sell everybody who's making Kydex about. Like, hey, you need to go buy this piece of equipment. It's like, well, you know, everyone's got a toaster over a belt sander, a, <laughs> a scroll saw, and a, and a buffing wheel. They're making holsters. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's not like I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to do buffing wheel reviews. I, I mean, there are folks out there who know so much more than me about buffing. I mean, one of the, one of the holster clinics resulted in, in uh, another maker getting and getting more involved in YouTube, and you know he had you know decades of jewelry making experience, and he shared his he like shared his true jewelry making knowledge about the buffing wheel with everybody in the community. Wow! And we we've, we've seen an improvement already. He like sent us like samples of the compounds. We went there's a, a big jewelry district here in Philadelphia. We went down there to, the, to their supply shop and like like badgered them incessantly about compound and so you know we got our hands on the right stuff and we saw a big improvement that's, that's cool. fantastic that's i mean that's that's you know the 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 the, the, the benefit the big 
biggest benefit of, of, of putting the information out there is that people love to help you back. You know, uh, that has allowed us to do things with our business that would have been impossible otherwise. Um, you know, through the, 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 the community that we're involved with, we can, do, we can kind of like project ourselves like a larger company. You know, I'm not going to go through as much Kydex as a company like Safari Land will, but us and our viewers may. Right. So if, if you know, if we want to get involved with a company like Index Fasteners, you know, we say, hey, we have access to this, this, this huge customer base and they want the following things. Can you do that? Well, you know, it's it's the same as you know if a bigger company put out like a like like a like an RFP or something, you know, right? They're going to get a lot more response, knowing that you know they're going to be a big a, a big fish. So you know, you know, I don't personally, I don't, I don't buy as much Kydex as probably some of the folks out there making holsters because we because we make a lot of small things, but us plus the community creates a bigger fish, and then they want to be more involved with us in terms of like developing things. So you know, um, it's it's really great to have a company like Index Fasteners behind us. I'm not just I'm not just saying that to like stroke them and like get free shit, but it like truly is um, their willingness to to like ask the community what they need mm-hmm. and then make it available is phenomenal. Like there, if if somebody out there is like working on something and you just don't have the means to get it, you know mass-produced or you think it's a good idea that other holster makers might want, just get in touch with them. They're probably going to jump on it. You know, and they're like, they, they reach out to companies like uh, Author Grid Concepts to like get, you know, there were things that always put the DIYers a little bit behind a bigger company in terms of like injection molding is a huge, huge, huge investment. Um, it's thousands upon thousands of dollars. And if you're a smaller company, it's not really reasonable to tie up a couple of thousand dollars in an investment which you might not be able to pay for in the volume of holsters that you sell. But if you get hooked up with a bigger company which can sell more units than you can in terms of like the components, well, you go in on half with them, you get your components for a, a, a little bit less, and then they distribute these components to everybody else and the price evens out, and then the quality of everybody's gear goes up. Right. You know? So, and that's that's phenomenal. Like, uh, we were making um, polymer coated nylon belt loops and trying to. <laughs> We thought that it would be reasonable for us to manufacture and distribute them, and it just you know like we would spend all day making these belt loops, and we're all, we're like we can't even get the holsters done. So we got in touch with them, and said you guys take over, and we'll just funnel funnel you these these customers. And not only did they take them over, but they improved them. Right. So I mean that's that's fantastic, and that's that's very helpful. And then on top of it, the number of people who um, who who we've helped, like for example. Um, a friend of ours, uh, somebody who's become our friend as a result of this, is um, a, a gunsmith. And through these videos, he essentially you know, increased his business in a significant amount by offering gunsmithing and holsters. And, has, and as he's expanded his capacity, he's also expanded his capacity to help us. So that gives us access to, like, you know, if we need something, you know, if we want to work on something that needs to be milled or CNC'd, we have a contact that we can reach out to who's, you know. It's kind of like networking. Yeah, like willing to work with us at a level that a, a, a stranger in another company would. Right. You know, uh, for example, uh, we, we had an idea to, uh, in, in, you know, we started planning. We, we're in the process of planning on making these struts for our skeleton holsters injection mold. That's going to that's take a while. But the the... the the time lapse between that occurring to us and having 3D printed models of our first idea in our hand was literally three days. Wow. As the result of, 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 the, of, the, of the community of people who are just like unbelievably willing to help out. And I, and I think that's like, I think that's good for, for, for everybody because the more that everybody helps each other get better, the better everybody's products are going to get, and the more resources are going to be available to all of us. Which is kind of like, on one hand, it would be really awesome to like keep it all secret and like say, yeah, well, you know what? We've got this exclusive, awesome shit. Our shit's injection molded and it's like machine made, and we've got we're like the you know we're the we're like the unassailably best. But to get there would be insane, and we'd have to you know 
trample on all these other awesome people in order to do it. And that's not that's not exactly worth it, I don't think. Yeah. I think it's better to see everybody get better. Yeah, I remember back in the day with it's your... like real capitalism. If all, if all your competition's improving at the same time you are, you better be one serious capitalist to pull it off. I know, right? I'll call him up and say, oh, sure. dog's chasing the cats. 